So I got this King Bolin K7, and I'm gonna show you guys how to use it. Watch him make it, break it, break it, break it, it down. King Bolin K7. We've got the power on off up here. On the back, there's a camera. Below is the port where you plug in the charger or the uh, USB cable so you can transfer data. I'm gonna run through all these buttons. That is a store where you will be able to purchase more software if it's already not on the scanner. This runs just the check engine light and shows OBD data. Goes pretty fast there. Shows all your mode statuses, okay? This is gonna bring us to the full scan for all the systems. We can either pick by model, search down here, or you can pick American, European, Asian, or we can search for them. Or you can do auto search. History shows you everything that was already ran. I've tried this a few times. OBD to IM is no different than the check engine from the first screen. Quick check and print is it's gonna run a scan and then automatically print it. And then demo is if you're not sure how to use it, you can play around in here. And it gives you some cars to pretend you're gonna scan. So you can try that if you wanna mess around with it yourself. Oop. Also, if you are in a screen you wanna get out of, you can swipe it, the arrow will pull up and it brings you back to the previous. So if I swipe again, it'll kick me out. Doesn't matter which way you go it still re resets you to the previous screen. Reset is a quick jump to these guys here. So when you pick it, it'll give you the models that it's able to do that service for, okay? So not all cars can do all of these resets, but if your car does, then it's available here on the screen. Okay? And again, you can swipe to go back or push that return arrow. Repair info brings you to your file saved. You got Google, Yahoo, there's a couple uh, videos or information here on how to do some things with the scanner, I mean. So if I'm in learning, it gives you a little message. Then it gives you some information on how to do certain things for some GM cars and Ford. So not a whole lot in here, and I imagine they would expand that in the future. Then if you wanted to update the software, it would show you what's available. I got 11 available for update. And then when you first get this, there's gonna be updates up the wazoo depending on when you get it. But I've had it updated quite a bit. I had to update it quite a bit. All right, and then module, you can attach things to this electronically, a battery tester, oscilloscope, a printer, a video scope or tire monitor scanner. So that's pretty cool. You can expand its functionality. It files all your save files of the things you do and how you save it. Depends on how you save it in there, okay? Settings, of course, is your settings for the scanner. Like if I record anything out here and I wanna get it off here, I would change USB connection mode, okay? Screenshots, Wi-Fi, so all the settings you would have of a typical scanner. Kind of nice. So I'm gonna run you through how we would use this. You plug it into the port under the dash and then you would pick scan. Then you would pick your car or you can go to auto search. It does this fancy little lottery looking thing.
All this VIN scan helps with is it helps pick the car and then it puts it into the document that you're gonna save for the report. So that's what's nice about that. But it doesn't really know, based on the VIN, any options of the car. So it's not like having the VIN or not having a VIN does much for you, it's just nice for the report. System selection, if I pick that, I'm gonna go straight to the system that I want to work with. If I pick system scan, it's gonna scan the whole car and report back all the modules that are reading, meaning installed or communicating. If I do health report, it's gonna do the same thing as system scan, although it's gonna show me what fault codes are in the control modules. So I'm gonna run the health report. Yes. Ignition is on. It does show elapsed time. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just jump forward so you don't see the whole progress. I'll give you a couple seconds of how it looks. All the modules start popping up, showing check mark if it's good, exclamation if it doesn't read, um, which means it's either not installed or there's a problem with it and it's not reading. And then red means there's a fault code and the number inside means how many fault codes are in that control module, right? So I'm gonna let it do its thing and I'll come back when it's done to show you the time. All right, so we're just about wrapped up. You see we're going on just under five minutes. This isn't for every car, depends on the model. Um, with this being a Mercedes, this thing has all of these control modules that it's trying to read. The factory scanner can read the VIN and know what's supposed to be in there, so the scan goes pretty quick. But when you have an aftermarket scanner, it doesn't know what's involved. So it scans for everything Mercedes has to offer and then reports back what modules reporting back. So not every car will take five minutes. I think my Dodge might take like a minute and a half max, but now we're showing all the control modules that not only returned with information, meaning that it's there, but then it shows the fault code in there. And you can do that with all the modules if you just wanna see what's in there, or you go to the report, And in the report, it will show you all the modules, drop down box and everything. Now, when you email yourself this, it does the same, which is pretty neat. In the email, you can click it and expand it. It's pretty cool. So that way the information you can, you can keep. All right, so now when you wanna go into a control module, what you can do is let me find one here that I can mess with. Press the red arrow. And it will enter you into the module. Now you're going inside the module, okay? You get the same screen or same options in every module. You get to read the module information. You get to read the fault code, clear the fault code, read the data stream or the live data. You can activate stuff. You can do special functions, which is like that maintenance reset screen section. Coding, you can change options and modules. Sometimes modules can be used in different cars. So you go to coding to tell the car, tell the module what car it's in and what it's supposed to do. And then if you're going to change the module, it will save it into the scanner and then put it into the new module when you install the new module, right? So like copy and paste of all the data. So one thing I like to do is let me show you what I mean by the data stream. I'll pick something easy. We will go to wipe and wash. And what I'm gonna do is just select all. And I'm going to look for washer pump, okay? I'm gonna activate it. See how it goes on, okay? So I'm gonna push the button over here and you're gonna see the setting change. So that lets you know that it's reading that data. You get to see what the control module sees, okay? Man, this thing needs wipers. All right. Now let's see what else we can do here. This is just for reading the data, okay? If I go to the switch for exterior lights, select all. So right now it's on auto and it shows run auto, okay? 
Now we're on standing lights. Parking light. Parking light. And I'm going through all the sections here. Now driving lights. Fog light. So if you had a car where you're not sure why the lights aren't working, you would go to live data and read to see if the switch is reading. So now that we know the switch is reading, we know the module is working because it's reading the switch data, right? So that's how you start to diagnose the cars by going down the path of what can the control module see. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to active test or actuation test or drive link or by direction, a couple different names depending on who's saying it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna mess with wipe and wash. It's the easiest windshield washer pump. And I'm going to activate it. Okay. So that's what it means by bi direction. You can make something work. Okay. The actuations perform as long as the button is pressed. Well, false. But you get to see that you get to activate whatever the car can activate. Now I'm going to show you a little bit better of a test. So now I'm in the left front door control module. All right. And I'm going to go to read data stream. And I'm going to go to power window and mirror, we're gonna pick it all. And so up, down, see it working there? Up, down, automatic down, automatic up. Okay, so we know the switch is reading. Then I can go from the left mirror button, right mirror button. Button. So we get to read whatever the module is reading. You'd need this when you're trying to diagnose stuff. Us mechanics, we can't just guess at stuff. We got to use scanners to see what's going on in there, right? So now we're going to go to actuations of the door. I like using this test in almost all my scanner videos when it comes to the window. So F3 is going to raise, F4 is going to lower. So we're going to press F4. Okay. And now F3 to raise it. So this just told us a whole bunch if we're trying to diagnose it. First, I get to see the switch working. So we know it's reading. Then I get to use it with a scanner. So we know it's working, right? If I was trying to use it with a scanner and nothing happened, then I would know we got a problem with a motor, or maybe the module's not sending it, right? But you gotta have this. This is like the interface or the gateway between the mechanic and the car to figure out what's going on with it. So that's why bi-direction is very important. And it's a great thing to have in these scanners. So that's pretty, that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot other than repetition of use and getting experience with this thing. So, if you want to see a sample of the coding, then we'll go back to the SAM. All right, and we'll go to very encoding. And this is all the coding for what the module is gonna, gonna do or how it's gonna work, right? Now, a lot of this stuff we don't do in the dealership, um, other than switch it from module to module. We don't go in here and mess with it much. If we're to add something to the car, then you can turn on the setting. Like if we added parking sensors or a rear view camera, then we could turn it on. But some of these aftermarket scanners have way more in-depth act, act, uh, what's the word, access than we do for the factory one. So, and then setting and change over. 
looks like some more functions in here you can change so some of these you could mess up the car meaning you can turn on a setting and turn off a setting and if you're not sure what you did you know you can you can cause an issue so some of these things unlock some stuff in the car that we can't even do with the factory scanner so here's the coding for that but yeah there's there's a lot it's, this little thing can do a lot i, uh, I hope my how-to of the king bolin k7 helped you guys if this is something you're interested in i'll leave a link down below in the description there might even be a coupon code for my viewers be sure to like and subscribe share it with someone that you think might uh, want to see something like this uh, in the future i'll do um you know direct diagnosis with this to see what it's capable of and to see how thorough it is because it's really hard to try this all to try this on all all the cars in one shot right so it's like um it's gonna take some time i've only had it for a few weeks so uh it's gonna take some time to get used to and to use it and to try it to be able to go out there and do a thorough review on it so right now it's just a just an overview and a how-to so when i figure out uh, the quirks and and any of the idiosyncrasies or or issues with it i'll make sure i let you guys know if you own one of these and have problems or good feedback leave it in the comments help the next guy out right so um again my name is lou you guys take care thanks for watching